And that's what this bill deals with. Thank you, Senator Manning. I've got Senator Boyer, Werner, McCoy, and Cormier in the left in the first round. Senator Boyer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator Black, for that very interesting presentation. I have a uh, couple of questions. One of them has to do with uh, you mentioning the international community, and you mentioned the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. I am wondering about the 20 percent who have not signed on and how the uh, principles of free prior and informed consent that are found within the Declaration, as you know, that uh, how they have been implemented on the 20 percent or with the 20 percent that have not signed on? I don't know. Thank you, Senator Boyer. I cannot speak specifically on that, but I can assume the following. I can assume that all of those groups, the 20 percent, who have not signed benefit agreements, I have assumed that they had the same overtures, opportunities, cons consultations, meetings that every other group had. They just elected for their, you know, reasons, whether they were business reasons or other reasons, not to sign agreements. So be it. And that actually the free prior and informed consent was implemented at that time? I have to assume so. Okay. Because, I mean, if can, I mean, I have seen, again, to Senators Galvez, Senator Galvez's point, I come from the energy industry, of which I'm proud. I have made a major contribution, I believe, in terms of energy policy in this country over decades, of which I am proud. And I have seen the work which Kinder Morgan has done has actually set the standard for consultation on pipelines. I've seen other methods utilized. I've, I'll just leave it at that. I've seen other methods utilized. Kinder Morgan, under their leadership, and you know their, their leader in Canada, a gentleman called Ian Anderson, deserves a sainthood, in my view, for the work that he has done endeavoring to consult with municipalities, uh, municipalities, First Nations groups, contractors, unions, the complete gambit of stakeholders. Of course you're not going to get 100% of people agree. I mean, that's just, that's just simply not possible. For, but for them to have reached a point where 80% of the groups along the line which represents apparently, just for the First Nations group, about $400 million in benefits agreements, plus employment, plus employment opportunities. So that's in addition to that. And that doesn't count municipalities, like the municipality of Kamloops, you know, a new sports center. I say that, I don't know that specifically, but that kind of asset is, has been developed along the route. So my view would be that the consultation was exhaustive. And you, as a, one of Canada's leading lawyers, would know that if you look at the Clyde River case, fascinating reading, I thought. We have to be lawyers to think that, I think. But the Clyde case and the Thames case, the Supreme Court of Canada has set out pretty clearly that you have to have open, meaningful, engaged consultation. This is what you have to have. My guess is Kinder Morgan is going to be able to fit within that quite comfortably. That will be my guess. The court, the court has also said that it's determinant upon the depth of the effect on the Indigenous rights protected in Section 35 on how deep that consultation actually goes. And I agree with that. Thank you, Senator No, I, I, completely, I completely agree with that analysis. Senator Werner. Merci, uh, 